Hey everybody, Hunter Fisher, Trapper, Trader, Guide, Scout, and Interpreter, and Just a Country Cook, Steve Hall, here in Nashville, Tennessee, along with Pretty Miss Sheila. Hi, Sheila. Hi. One of our subscribers said, why don't you make some pickled vegetables, you know, with like carrots and cucumbers and all kinds of stuff, and boy, he got me off on a tangent. I went to the store, and I got cauliflower, and I got some green beans, and some asparagus, and some squash, and green and red peppers, and carrots, and we're going to put all these in the jars, and we're going to make a different brine, and we're going to make pickled vegetables. Let's get started. All right, we got all our veggies here, and let me kind of go through what I've been doing. I took the big main stalk of this and cut it off on this cauliflower, and I've been breaking off these nice little chunks off of here. And I'm going to move them over there because I'm going to put just a little bit of each in here and kind of get a blend. Then I took these beans and I cut the little ends off them. You probably can't see that. Let me move this out of the way. And I just nipped the, the ends off of these to get rid of the rough stuff. Then I kind of cut them in bite-sized pieces. And I got my little green beans. Then I took these carrots. And because a carrot kind of grows like a tree, it grows out like almost like in rings, it's hard for the brine to get in there, I would think. I don't know. I've never did this before pickled vegetables. So I cut these all like this, broke it open lengthwise with these little baby carrots. And all this stuff's been washed and rinsed off, by the way. That way the brine can soak in there better. I just left two of them for an example. So I can cut them lengthwise like that. I think that'll let the brine in better. Then I got some squash here, some yellow squash. And what I did is I cut each end off, then I cut them in half, and I want to cut them about this big for nice bite-sized pieces coming out of the jar. And those will go in the jar as well. And the little end piece that stuck out, I didn't leave him out of there. I cut those little pieces up as well and put them in there. I might not use all of this stuff. I'm just going to use enough to fill up these jars a little at a time. But this is how I'm doing it. Now this, I, <laughs> I shouldn't really mention this because I do this from time to time. I don't know why the store sells you asparagus like this because they know the last four inches of it is worthless. You can't do anything with it. So every now and then I'm in the store, I'll break these off like this, throw them down in the bin, and I'll bring this bunch out here like this, I'll break them off, and then I'll bring them out to the store. That one's going to fight me. And I'll bring them out to the cash register and I'll say, all right, I'm going to weigh these in. And I basically told them, you can keep the chunk that ain't no good. But anyway, maybe I shouldn't even admit it to that, but I do that from time to time. Then I'm going to cut these again and about those perfect, them look kind of nice. I think I'll leave those together. And even though the rubber bands were still on here, we washed them in the sink. So I'm going to put these. These are the ones I'll probably use because they look so pretty. And I'll save these and just cook them for later. Now I'm going to do my peppers. I already did a green pepper. It's over here. So what I'm going to do with this red one is how I normally cut up peppers. Is cut off these ends. These can all be diced up for breakfast. But this is what I want to use in my recipe. And if you'll just cut this close to the skin inside, you'll only have to make about three cuts dump it out and there you go. That's how I cut up a red pepper or a green pepper. And these are perfect now because now I got my perfect little strips to go in my pickled veggies here. When I was talking about doing this recipe, I said, I'll just take it to the point where I normally dice it up and then I'll just cut it in nice little strips like this to go in there. Now, I'm going to see what kind of cucumbers we have here. I'm going to leave the skin on, and I'm going to cut these end for end as well. Then I'm going to cut them again like this, end for end. Then I'm going to shear off all the seeds, because I don't want that moisture in there. And this will give me a good product to cut up was thinking about this the other day, how I was going to cut up these cucumbers because I wanted to put them in there because that was one of the things that the guy mentioned 
was doing cucumbers. And here's how I thought in my mind I would do this. Cut it end for end. Now, I've got my nice little bite-sized pieces to go in my pickled veggies. In fact, I could actually cut these in a strip longer and make it nice little pieces like that. I might do that. Make these guys join the party the same way. See, now you just got a nice solid piece that'll absorb that brine, but it won't leave seeds and moisture in the jar. All right, so we got our cucumbers. I got one more to cut up here, and then we're going to start our brine. See you in a second. I'm ready to start making my brine, but I can't stand it. I got to load these jars first because I want to see what this looks like. A little bit of squash. Oh, by the way, I did chop up an onion too. You can't have pickled anything without onions in it. A little bit of squash. Here about some green beans in there. A little bit of cauliflower. Just a little dab at a time here because I want to get all this in here. Some of those are going to run for the floor, I see. A little bit of our cucumber. Got to have pickled cucumbers. Now because this is going to be kind of like a almost like a chow chow type of mixture, or relish, so to speak. Pick a few more little red peppers. I'm going to put two cups of sugar in this brine over here. A little bit of asparagus tops in there. And then back to the same thing. A few more carrots. That looked beautiful. Golly, what a great idea. Some onions in there, just a few at a time. Of course, my green beans. I'm not going to stop the camera on this one because I want to have you enjoy this as much as I am. I'm just tickled to death how this is coming out. A little more cauliflower. Now, I didn't get down to the bottom of my bowl over here and get some of my, my green bell peppers in there. I think I grabbed a cucumber chunk by mistake. Get in there, you little guys. Got a few more slices of red bell pepper. I want to share that with both of them. Well, I got a couple more little pieces down in here. And then, of course, if I'm going to top it off with anything, it's probably going to be onions. I do like the squash idea in there. That was Sheila's idea. Put that in there. And I think we are close to maybe a couple more little carrots for color. I'm going to leave a little head space this time except for a couple little onions. And I cut them kind of thick, but I cut them in smaller chunks so that they would fit down in there. Now these, unlike that bologna or hot dogs, you can really pack these down in here a ways. I like onions, so we'll probably top it with onions. And we're probably going to cook our brine and let it cool completely to put it on here. I don't want to put the brine in here hot because I want these vegetables to stay crisp and all the above. So we're going to make it and cool it down and cover it up. So let's start making our brine. Got some boiling in here already, but I'm going to put the rest of the four cups of white vinegar in there. Now I always make recipes, whether it be pickled onions, Pickled hot dogs, pickled bologna, pickled vegetables, which I've never made before, I'll admit to that. I always use four cups of vinegar because I want to be able to have a little left over in case I want to pickle some eggs or something, try something different. Boy, this is a perfect time to have some left over because I put a few in a little pint jar just for Sheila, just in case. Now, when I do the pickled hot dogs with the hot sauce, I use a half a cup of sugar. When I do the pickled bologna with the other hot sauce, I use the whole cup of sugar. But when I make pickled shrimp or I make pickled fish, I take eight cups of vinegar and six cups or even seven cups of sugar because I really like that flavor. Now, because this is trying to kind of force itself into a relish flavor, I'm not going to go that extreme, but I am going 50%. I'm going two cups of sugar for four cups of vinegar. Nothing could be easier than this. I'm not going to put cumin in here. I'm not going to put hot sauce in here. But I am going to put in 
a good heaping tablespoon of pickling spice. Of course, everybody asks me what's pickling spice in, what all's in there. Don't worry about it. Just go buy something that says pickling spice on there at the store, whether it's in one of these little plastic jars or in the tin can. And that's it. Vinegar, sugar, and pickling spice. And I'm going to bring this to a boil, and then I'm going to let it simmer for about, oh, three to five minutes. I want to get them ingredients out of the pickling spice to kind of marriage right into the rest of that good stuff. And that's it. Four cups of vinegar, two cups of sugar, one heaping tablespoon of pickling spice. That is it. We're going to bring this to a boil, and then we're going to simmer it for about three to five minutes. Then we're going to take the time to chill it all the way down. A lot of times I'll take it in the sink and run water up about halfway and then put some ice cubes around the outside of the pot to try to force cool it down. And that does help. Then if I get it cool enough, I've even sat it in the freezer because I get in a hurry. I want to chill it. But we're going to bring this to a boil and we'll see you in just a couple of minutes. This has come to a boil. Let me turn this way down to super low medium. I just want to simmer this for a little bit. It was doing good inside that lid there, boiling pretty good. In fact, I was off doing something else. I come back, it had been boiling for about a minute already, so we might not have to simmer it that long. Oh, that tastes delicious. That is really a good bittersweet kind of flavor with all that vinegar and sugar. I am really tempted to put a third cup of sugar in there, but I think I'm just going to go with two. And you can make a batch and then you can go from there when you make it. But because that was boiling for a good couple of minutes there, I think I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to cool it completely down and then we'll be right back. Well, we cooked it and we cooled it and I cheated. I put this pot right here down in the sink and filled it about that full of water. Put a whole bunch of ice around the outside just so it would cool down quickly. And I'm telling you, this stuff, wow. I can almost drink that stuff just straight up. It's that good. I can't wait to see what it's like on these veggies. And I'll tell you, you probably see some of the pickling spice at the bottom, some floating on top. Now, you can strain that off if you want, but I like it mixed in with the vegetables to where I get a little bit of it from time to time. I don't mind eating pickled anything and picking a few of them out of my mouth. I just like the flavor in there. I think the longer it sits in there, the better it gets. So, with that said, I gotta find something someday that will not leak when you pour out of it. Today's not the day. Boy, don't that look beautiful? You gotta move that up there. I'm so proud. You gotta see my little ball jars full of goodies. I notice these take a little more brine because they, there we go, perfect. Both of them. I don't think I'm going to have enough to fill up Sheila's little veggies. And I, Sheila said, what are we going to do with these vegetables? And before I could say something, she says, I know we're having a big salad tonight and we're going to chop up a lot of those vegetables and put them in our salad. I said, that sounds absolutely wonderful. Now I'm going to do what I normally do here. And that screw the lids on these. Snug it up. I'm going to put it in the fridge, but I always put them in the fridge upside down. They never leak. I've never had one leak yet. And that way, the stuff that's at the very top gets brine on it. And even though there's not brine on the bottom, in about three days when I turn this over, it'll take another three or four days to eat to the bottom of it, and then that'll be brine. So. But right now, these are going in the refrigerator like this, and wow, we couldn't be happier to, with the recipe that this guy suggested that we make pickled vegetables, sweet pickled vegetables. What a great recipe. And I got to thinking about poor Sheila's little veggies, and I thought, wait a minute, I poured as much juice as I had left in there, and it only filled it half full. So why not turn it upside down, let it sit in the refrigerator for three days, then she can turn it over and eat a few of them off the top, put the lid back on, and turn it back over again, and it'll brine some more. Then she can turn it back over. i got to turn these back over just for the picture, because don't those look 
just absolutely beautiful. Whoever it was that sent a little message to me and said, you ought to try pickled vegetables, there you go, buddy. There's your recipe. Give it a try. We hope you subscribe to our channel. There's a little Shotgun Red's face over here on this side. should pop up in a little bit if it hasn't already. We'll add another recipe over here that we hope you enjoy. Maybe one of those other pickled hot dogs or pickled bologna recipes. But most of all, is this the most delicious looking and I'll bet tasting pickled vegetables you ever had? If it ain't, it ought to be. This is Steve Hall in Nashville, Tennessee saying, hope you subscribe to our channel and we'll see you next time right here on Cooking with Shotgun Red. Did I do good with your little jar, Sheila? You did great. All right. I wouldn't leave you out. Now, see, this part will be pickled. Then you can turn it over and eat some and turn it back over and eat a few more and that kind of thing. Man, I'm so smart.